One of my goals for people who study financial accounting is to be able to use that information to assess the health of an organization. Let's talk about a few things that we can use to analyze a company's accounts receivable practices. Now, there are a number of ratios and metrics that we could evaluate, but two of the more common are the accounts receivable turnover ratio and then the average collection period. What I'd like you to think about with the accounts receivable turnover ratio is it's as if we are selling products to our customers or services, we're making sales to our customers, and then we're collecting those receivables. And then we sell some more items and we collect those and we sell some more and then we collect those. Now in reality, we're never going to completely let our accounts receivable go down to zero most times, but you can think about it that way, as if that were occurring. Generate receivables, collect them. So accounts receivable goes down to zero. Generate more receivables, collect those, back to zero. So we're wondering how many times does that turnover occur during a particular time period? Most likely a year. And once we know that turnover ratio, we can then use that turnover ratio, you can see right here, to figure out what is the average collection period or what is the average number of days that it takes a company to collect its receivables. You might start to see some of the ways we can use this information to assess the company's health because cash is the lifeblood of an organization. Without cash, you can't pay your bills, you cannot pay your employees. So the more quickly that you collect cash, the better your liquidity is going to be, your short-term health. Let's think about a couple of extreme examples. Think about an accounts receivable turnover ratio that is, um, let's go with 365, okay, point zero. So what that means is, 365 times during the year, we make a sale and collect it. We make a sale and we collect it. If that were the case, look what would happen to your average collection period. 365 is the turnover ratio. That means on average, you're only waiting one day to collect your receivables, which is pretty darn good. Now we could look at another extreme. What if your accounts receivable turnover ratio was a dismal 1.0. In other words, we're only collecting those receivables one time per year. If that were the case, now we'd be dividing by one over here and your average collection period would be 365 days. I don't know about you, but I would rather get paid in one day than 365 days. Let's apply these concepts to a couple of real life companies. First of all, let's take a look at Under Armour. So we have balance sheets at the end of 2018 and the end of 2017 for Under Armour. And we have income statements for the years ended 2018, 2017, 2016. Now, if we wanna calculate the accounts receivable turnover ratio, we first need to devote our attention toward the denominator and try to figure out what is this average accounts receivable. Well, there are a number of ways to calculate an average, but let's just use a simple average. Beginning plus ending divided by two. As you can see, I've marked off the accounts receivable. We have the ending accounts receivable right here. The previous year's balance sheet gives us the beginning accounts receivable. So if we combine those numbers, simple average, 652,546 is, uh, is the ending amount. And then we have the beginning over here. I would like to point out that this is, uh, this is in thousands, okay? So you have to add some zeros. What that means is we're not dealing with $652,000 here. We're dealing with $652 million in accounts receivable. And that gives us an average of just over $631 million for Under Armour when averaging 2018, 2017. So we can go down here and we can plug that average into the turnover formula. And now we need net credit sales. Now, the reason it's net credit sales is because if the company happens to collect payment via cash, there's no risk of non-payment. They've already been paid. So we only worry about the credit sales because one of the things we're trying to measure here is uh, what's the risk that we don't get paid or that we get paid slowly. 
So we're only worried about those sales revenues where we've extended credit to the customer. For a, for a company like Under Armour, we can assume that these are all credit sales. So we take the 2018 income statement and we see that the uh, credit sales are, and remember we're adding some zeros here, so this is 5.2 billion with a B right there. Once you've identified the elements, the math is pretty straightforward and we see that Under Armour has an accounts receivable turnover ratio of just over 8.2. So what that means is Under Armour collects its receivables on average 8.2 times during this particular year. We're still looking at Under Armour, but now we want to look at the average collection period. And sometimes that number is actually a little bit more tangible for people to understand. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take the accounts receivable turnover ratio that we just calculated so for 2018, for Under Armour, it was 8.23, okay? and divide that into the number of days in a year. So if we're turning over receivables roughly eight times per year, dividing into the number of days each year will give us, on average, how many days Under Armour needed to wait to collect payment. And we can see very quickly that Under Armour waited, on average, 44 days to receive payment from its customers when it extended credit. That was Under Armour. Let's look at a similar company, Lululemon Athletica. Now, I've already taken the liberty here of showing you what the beginning and the ending accounts receivable were for Lululemon and calculating the average. As a reminder, Lululemon is a little different than Under Armour because it uses a fiscal year instead of the Gregorian calendar for measuring its financial activity. That's why the beginning balance sheet date is at the end of January and the ending balance sheet date is here at the beginning of February. Uh, but either way, these are the beginning and ending accounts receivable balances and the average comes out to 27,480. Remember, these are all in thousands, so that's really 27,480. And what we want to do next is we want to take with the AR turnover is take the net credit sales. So we can pull in uh, what we're seeing from the income statement here. Right. We're just going to grab that from the most recent fiscal year. Okay. And then divide that by the average accounts receivable that we just calculated just a few minutes ago. Now pull this number down over there, and we see that the turnover is almost 120. So 119.66, almost 120. Now that by itself may not have a lot of context for you. I mean, as a reminder, what it means is we're turning over our receivables roughly um, 120 times per year. But what does that mean in terms of days? Well, just as we did with Under Armour, you can take this turnover ratio and divide it into the number of days in a year. And we get something slightly more tangible, at least potentially when we do that, because that's approximately three days. Now we see that on average, for this most recent fiscal year, Lululemon collected their receivables in three days. That's pretty darn quick. You might recall that Under Armour's average collection period was a lot longer. So let's take a few minutes and compare those companies and see what kind of lessons we can learn from those comparisons. That's a pretty stark contrast between these two companies. I mean, you can see that a higher turnover ratio results in a much lower average collection period. Now, we have to maybe get a little bit of context here. Uh, because it may not be the case that Lululemon has a secret sauce and can collect from their customers uh, in a much more rapid fashion, or it might not be the case that Under Armour is doing a poor job. There might be some subtle differences here. For example, what if not all of Lululemon's sales are on credit? What if some of those are cash or credit card or something like that? So let's take a little deeper dive. Now, where I went for this deeper dive is I actually looked at Forms 10K. These are the annual reports that publicly traded companies file with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And they're available for us as the investing public to, to look at. We can research these things. And the financial statement disclosures tell stories. 
So I'm getting these out of the Forms 10-K, and these are specifically from the notes to the basic financial statements. So let's look at Lululemon first off. We primarily conduct our business through two channels, company-operated stores and direct-to-consumer, okay? So what that means is they are collecting payment very quickly because if you're doing a business-to-consumer transaction, the customers are probably paying with cash or credit card almost immediately. Now, Lululemon does say that they generate some revenue from outlets, uh, wholesale accounts, etc. And that probably explains why their average collection period is even as long as three days. Because uh, if it's just direct to consumer and through their company operated stores, that payment is probably happening almost immediately in most cases. I'm guessing that these sales to wholesale accounts and some of those other outlets uh, might just extend that period a little bit. But if you look at Under Armour's disclosures, what you can see is they say the majority of our sales are through wholesale channels, national and regional sporting goods chains, etc. It does say down here that some products are sold directly to consumers, but the majority is wholesale. You see, financial statements tell a story. We just have to know where to look for that story. And this really also underscores the reality that financial statement disclosure notes help amplify the financial statements, they explain the financial statements, they help place the financial statements in context. The financial statement disclosure notes are so essential, they are an integral part of the company's financial statements. So we can see it's important to benchmark our performance against competitors, but we have to understand the context there. Even two companies that seem to sell similar products may have different financial results because they have different distribution channels or different fundamental business strategies. It's also important to take a look at the same company over time. Here's Under Armour once again. You'll see the turnover ratio and the average collection period that we recently calculated. Let's see how Under Armour is doing within its own company over a period of time. So we can start here, take a look at 2016. Turnover ratio was a little over nine. Average collection period was roughly 40 days. 2017, look what happens to that turnover ratio. Drops pretty significantly and going from nine to eight actually increases our average collection period by about five days. And then in 2018, things improved just a little bit. So this is another way that we can analyze the company's liquidity, analyze the way it's managing its receivables by looking at trends within the same company over time.